have another Kamer game. And this is the best thing I'm going to show you today. Okay, and I have to find the right position. Ah, uh, okay. I found it. Okay, this is the most complicated thing that's ever happened in, in life. Not in chess, in it's, life. Mm -hmm, this is more complicated than when that guy played Queen A1. Whatever his name was. Uh, Votacek. Or Votacek, I don't know how to say his name. Either way is cool. His name is really cool. Okay, this is better than Queen A1. Okay. In this position, uh, this is Vlod Volodar Mirzin. And we've already seen a game of his also. He's that kid I was telling you about. And this is Vincent Keimer. This is round one. Uh, Merzin played a move that loses, played the move queen a5. Okay. Now white has the most complicated win in chess history. And he didn't do it. And the game ended in a draw. And when they asked him why he didn't do it, I'm going to tell you why he didn't do it. Okay. So the win, which he missed, he played the move rook f1, threatening f7. Mm -hmm. Okay, the move, the, the move that wins, which he saw everything. He saw everything except the last move. He saw everything. But he didn't see the last move, and that's the move you have to see. None of you will see it when it happens. But as I'm playing it, you won't see it. Like when I play it, you won't be like, oh, that was the move? Okay, so... White has to play knight f7 to win. Now, there's a very important question about the move rook b4, which we're going to discuss later. And I didn't understand why rook b4 lost, but now I do because I asked the engine. But that's also super complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so black plays the obvious move. Knight takes knight. White plays rook f1, threatening the knight on f7. The only way to defend the knight is with the rook. There's no other way to defend it. Can't play knight d6 because I take it. You can't play queen c7 because I take it. So you have to play rook f8 or rook e7. Doesn't matter which one. I take the knight. You take. And I play rook f1. Now I'm threatening queen takes rook check and I'm winning. Okay. So Vincent Keimer saw this. And he saw amazing defense for black. Unbelievable defense. Bishop f6. Always play bishop f6. Rook takes f6, rook a1 check, king h2, and now how does black defend his rook on f7? Let's see. Well, you can go queen c7. There's a bishop here. Oh. Um. Can't go there. Let's see. Man, I've seen some bad answers, Isaiah, but you're... You're working hard with the bad answer. God damn, King G7. Well, I hung my queen. God damn. Yeah, but he's, he's he said this. <laughs> I don't think that I don't, I don't think that defends the rook. God damn. I mean, King F8's worse, but it's close. <laughs> oh, let's see. All I want you to do is defend the rook, but it's very hard actually to see it. It's psychologically hard. Well, I mean, the knight obviously goes over there, then they, then, they then take, take it, my right. knight. Yep. So that, that doesn't seem to work. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to see how that would work. Man, somebody else said King G7. You're all banned. Well, it's hard to see stuff. Man, Bonarici and Thaddeus got it. I've never seen such indolence. Yeah, I don't know. Ready? Yeah. You'll, you'll like this. All right. You're going to like it. Queen A2, defending the rook through x-ray. Oh, that is nice. Okay, and Ke Keimer saw this and didn't play it because this is fine for black. Now I'm going to show you what Keimer missed. 
in this position after rook a1 check mm -hmm. you don't play king h2 you play the least likely move which move would you never play here with white i don't know just go ahead with all it. right well i guess queen d1 is the least likely move knight c1 winning hanging the knight with check the reason knight c1 wins is it stops queen a2 Although I'm realizing now I can play queen a2. That's funny. You can play queen a2 now. That's actually the best move. <laughs> then queen takes a2, rook takes a2, rook takes rook wins. White's a piece up because the rook's hanging. If you play rook a1, I have rook f1. Mm. Okay, so knight c1, and the idea is if you take the knight, then I play king h2. And there's no defense to queen takes rook check and rook takes h6 mate. Next move. There's nothing to do about this. Because you played knight c1 and you stopped queen a2. Although I do like the fact that queen a2 is the best move. After knight c1, this is the engine move. I, I do like that. Okay, so Keimer actually saw everything but didn't see knight c1. He saw king h2, queen a2, and he didn't play the line. If he had played the line and they got this position, and he played knight c1, he would have won. Okay, now, when people were talking about that brilliant line, I was wondering, instead of knight takes knight and the line we just looked at, what if black plays rook b4? And I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, I don't know, black's, what, what does white do? What white does is white takes this, double check, king h2. Now white's queen is attacked, and his knight's attacked. Mm-hmm. So I don't, know, I don't know what to do. So you play queen d3. So you're threatening e5 check winning the knight. So black takes. And I was like, black, black's up a piece. So, but, but the engine says white's completely winning. e5 attacking the knight. If I move the knight somewhere, well, if I don't move the knight, you take it. Okay, then you sack another piece, knight f4 threatening queen g6 mate. And black black gets mated here. Black's getting mated. So this this position after after e5 is winning for white. I don't know how anybody can see any of that, but Keimer wasn't concerned about this line. He was only concerned about the line with queen a2 because he didn't see knight c1. That's pretty complicated. That's in, ridiculously complicated. Yeah. So knight takes f7 does win. And white's winning. And the way the game went, he was he was not winning. Now, what's funny about all this is, which nobody has pointed out except me, queen a5 is the losing move. So, like, if two engines are playing, like the super tournaments they have where all the engines play each other, mm -hmm. the engine's not playing queen a5 because knight f7 wins and engine seizes everything. But queen a7 is equal. That defends the rook also, but it keeps an eye on this pawn here. And now knight f7 is equal. Because after knight f7, knight f7, rook here, rook here, rook takes, rook takes, rook f1, which we looked at with the queen here. Now we have bishop takes d4 check. And my queen can defend my rook by playing the move b6. And my queen defends my rook. That's something like an engine would see that a human would never see. And in fact, nobody's pointed that out but me because I was using the engine. So that's funny. Like... If two engines are playing, black plays the move queen a7 and it's equal. But when a human plays, queen a5 loses, and then nobody sees this and can see that all the way to knight c1. Nobody can see anything. So that, I mean, like, in this position to play knight f7 and be right, you have to see knight c1. Now, I've discussed this with many students before, and this is an example of what I've discussed. I usually can't show them an example but here's the example I can show them. There's three ways to play chess. You see nothing. You guys know what I'm talking about. You see everything or you see like some stuff. And 99% of chess players are in the seeing some stuff. Now, in this position, if Keimer saw everything, he would play knight takes f7. He sees almost everything, but doesn't see knight c1 so he doesn't play knight takes f7. Now let's get to a weaker player like me, okay? If I'm playing the game, I am more likely to play knight takes f7 than Keimer because I see less than him. And so I would see this if I was playing 
And there's no way that I would see bishop f6, rook a1, queen a2. I would never see that. Now, maybe in 1994, I would see it. Maybe. Now, now there's no way I would see it. Okay. So I would be sitting here going, I am winning. I'm the best. And my opponent would go here. And I'm like, so? Dumb, dummy. Then he would go here. And I'd be like, oh, he can play queen a2 here. And then I would find knight c1 because I'm finding it here. And Keimer already saw this long time ago, didn't see knight c1. I wouldn't see bishop f6, rook a1, check queen a2. So I would play the winning line by accident. Then I luckily have knight c1 winning. I would be like, oh, king h2, queen a2, I missed that. And then Keimer didn't miss it, but he missed this. But I would have already missed it. Now I get to this position and then I find it. Because, I mean, that's not a lot to calculate now. Knight c1, king h2 resigns. So by being a worse player, you play better. Because it's not necessarily better to see more than somebody if you're not seeing everything. And sometimes a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. And I have other examples where seeing more than the opponent means you play worse. Because neither one of you sees everything. And by you seeing less, you can luck into the right line. And by seeing more, you can't. And that's why... Technically, if you're a computer programmer, you'll understand this. Technically, you don't necessarily play better chess at a higher depth. So if one computer sees 30 ply and the other computer sees 32 ply and they're both wrong and 35 ply, you actually find everything. It's possible the 30 ply computer makes a better move because he doesn't see what further where the 32, but, that, but they're both wrong. And the guy who's more wrong, he's actually right because things can happen later that neither one of them saw. And so the guy who's wrong plays the right move and then later he locks into the winning position. And that's rare, but that can happen and that happened here. So a weaker player would have played knight f7, but a stronger player sees bishop f6, rook a1, queen a2, and the genius player, the engine, sees knight c1, which a human just doesn't see. Who's going to see knight c1? Ridiculous. Thank you for the sub, honking antelope. Now, don't make any, don't make any like big, you know, pronouncements because of what I said. <laughs> Whatever you do, you're going to lose. But I'm still telling you like the right thing, you know. Yeah, we got one bit from Big Daddy. Welcome wow. Twitch Paint Pokemon. First time chatter. Yeah. Giving us some kind of Lord of the Rings analogy. Who? Where? Right here. What do you say? When Denethor... Like when Denethor uses the Palantor Palantir. In Lord of the Rings and loses hope? Yeah. What? I don't remember. Yeah, you're just that. making stuff I up I loved now. Lord of the Rings when I was a kid, but... You're even making up Lord of the Rings. <laughs> all right, don't forget to keep going because it's paused. So we're missing all the donations. There we go. Thanks for explaining why I could beat Magnus. Exactly. 